All right, so this video has two parts. The first part here is gonna be the vlog because I wanna get better at vlogging. I wanna get better at creating more entertaining videos, at filming other than just me standing in front of my desk. I'll see you guys after the gym. I know, some of you are probably thinking, why don't you just teleport all the way to the gym? That's a good, that's a good question. I find myself thinking that as I'm editing this, probably in the future, why didn't he just? So filming at the gym with a GoPro was probably like one of the most difficult things I've done in a long time because it draws a lot of attention to yourself and it's really awkward. And so in order to get better at filming in public places to capture all these beautiful spaces and places, and I need to be able to do that. And so putting the GoPro on at the gym to do what I think would be cool, right? FPS workout. Maybe it sounds cooler in my head than it does. Uh, in actuality that happens a lot with a lot of my ideas and I'm sure the same thing happens to you guys when you're coding a project and then it ends up totally different than what you started with. That's how a lot of these videos go. I have a vision in my head of what I want it to be like and sometimes on the output I'm like I know this one's gonna be good and I get this kind of feeling like I know it's gonna be good and then other times I'm just like you know I could have done better and so one of the things that I'm balancing is if my idea is bad or if I'm just not good at it yet. I may not be good, but I can become good. I don't know where I was going with this conversation, but it was really awkward to film in public. Way too in my head about it, which is why I gotta be practicing these things. Do things that you're uncomfortable with. Okay, back home. Right, so now that we're thoroughly motivated from the gym, I thought we'd talk about a little bit of the soft skills that you need to be a developer. It's the same thing as you need every year. It doesn't matter what year it is, 2020, 2025, 2030. A large part of this career choice, career path, skill set is mentality, is ability to keep pushing through, through things when you're stuck, keep pushing through things when you don't know where it's gonna go, if you don't know if you're gonna get a job, you don't know what you're gonna make next, you don't know what you're gonna do next. The hardest part, I would say, when you're learning the skill set to be a developer, especially if you have another job or if it's not your full-time thing, is coming home after a long day at work and then sitting down to do more work. And no one's forcing you to do it. No one's making you do it. There's no pressure on you whatsoever. It's just something deep down that you know you wanna do. On the weekends, on the holidays, at night, when you wanna go hang out with your friends, you wanna go see a movie, you wanna go do something else and not this thing, but you know this thing is going to bring you the most value. And in that moment where you decide to do the code, learn the code, watch the videos, read the book, that's, that's a defining factor, that's a, that's a skill. In addition to this, when you start learning this, let's say you're self-taught and you don't wanna to go to college, let's say you got a different degree and you're doing this and there's all these people around you, they're like, what are you doing? What are you doing? And it'll be the people that are close to you, the people that you trust and respect that are like, what are you doing? Uh, I know that there's some of you guys out there that have families that are like, why aren't you going to college? Or they get upset that you're not going to college or they're more traditional or you're moving away from a, a path that you started that you thought you wanted but it wasn't really what you wanted and they don't believe that you'll get a job and they think it's a waste of time. Trust me, I know, right? I have a mechanical engineering degree and I had a job paying close to 70,000 right out of college and everyone in my family, by their standards, is like, wow, that's amazing. Uh, but I knew it just wasn't what I wanted to do. And they're like, you're giving all that up to do this, to go learn this code stuff? You're gonna have to start over from scratch? You're gonna have to get a lower salary? Like, I know. Another key here is to surround yourself in people that have a similar mindset, right? You're the average of the people you surround yourself with. It's why I created the Discord in the first place. That's not even a plug. But if you want, the link's in the description. Another thing that you need as a developer is resourcefulness. And I know if you have an internet connection, you can find almost anything, the, the solution to anything. If you wanna learn a skill, there is a way to find out how to do it. Uh, there's a reason that we're just kind of all glorified Googlers. We all kind of don't know what we're doing, we're just figuring it out. Even the senior of the most senior devs end up Googling things. Mm -hmm. 
Let's talk about some of the more technical stuff you need as a developer. I actually made a list for you so we can just move right along through this. Laptops. What kind of laptop do you need to be a developer in 2019? It doesn't really matter what type of laptop you get. Just make sure that you get some RAM so that you can make a virtual box if you want or a virtual machine. So if you're on Windows, you can run Mac OS or Linux or whatever. If you get a laptop, it doesn't, it doesn't matter. Maybe CPU matters a little bit, but I would say mostly just RAM, just to run virtual machines. What kind of languages you need to know for 2019? Well, um, it's kind of the same languages as last year and the year before that. People keep saying X language is dead, Y language is dead, example, PHP is dead, Ruby is dead. They're not dead. The reason people use PHP still is because people still use PHP. So there's jobs for it. And there's these huge legacy applications, just really old applications that use PHP, and it's not worth their time and money to go in and just change it to another language compared to the benefit that it would have, probably monetarily for that company, to go in and change from PHP to React or Angular. It's just the money is not there, especially if it's some internal proprietary software and customers aren't using it, but people that work at the company are, and there's no real gain from it. Everything is kind of working fine. It's a legacy application. There's gonna be jobs for those because people are gonna quit those jobs to go learn new state-of-the-art stuff for whatever other reason, and you're gonna to have to figure out how to, how to work on that. So what do you need to know for front-end? Well, for front-end, I would suggest JavaScript, right? JavaScript's not going anywhere anytime soon. It's only getting bigger. Um, what kind of technologies with JavaScript? Well, you got React, you got Vue, you got Angular, probably in the order I'd pick up Vue first, then move on to React, and then I'd learn Angular. Also learn jQuery. I know jQuery's old, people don't use jQuery. That's actually not true. I use jQuery at almost all of my jobs for some sort of site that we were just kind of supporting for some customer who didn't want to pay us any more money, but we agreed in the contract to support them, and we made it with jQuery originally, like years ago. So now we're just supporting it with jQuery. There's a reason to learn jQuery. Also, it's good to get started with to learn about event listeners and how to grab things on the DOM and move things around. And it's a lot less code than vanilla JavaScript and it's not too different from vanilla JavaScript. So if you're learning that, take a step into jQuery and it's not that, it's not that far of a leap. And then you get to React and these libraries and all these things that you need to learn about how to set up an environment with. I would also learn SAS less, um, preprocessors, material design is really hot right now. That's Google's design style, basically, material design. So every time you open up some sort of Google form and those little lines that expand out, that's, you know, Google material design. Um, there's also CSS Grid. We have Bootstrap. We have Flexbox. You definitely need to know about Flexbox. I get this question, when would you use Flexbox compared to Bootstrap? Well, Flexbox is not, it's not an entire framework to make your, your application responsive. Flexbox is just a, a, a way to lay out containers and divs. That's the difference. So now for backend technologies. You need to know SQL, Mongo, give or take. I mean, SQL is where it's at. There's just a majority of people are using SQL. Mongo can be faster. It's good to know about non-SQL type databases. I made a video about this before. You can use SQL Bolt to learn about SQL. So like a little interactive quiz that you could use. Also for backend, if you want to learn a backend language, I mean, you don't want to differentiate between the, the syntax too much, well, you could learn Node. Node is JavaScript on the backend. You can do the same thing with Node as you could with PHP or Ruby or anything like that. Um, but now you don't really have to learn the ins and outs and nuances and different syntax of a whole new language. I still recommend learning PHP and I also recommend learning Python. I learned Python first just because JavaScript and Python are the top two languages right now for jobs. Python also has a lot of utility. You can do machine learning, you can do AI, you can do hardware, Raspberry Pi for example. You can do Flask, you can do Django. You can do lots of different things with Python. It's not the fastest, right? It's not the fastest language, but you can do so many things with it that it's just so useful in getting a job. Let's look at some resources that you could use to learn code. Let's start off with the free stuff first. We got Free Code Camp. We got the Odin Project, although the Odin Project does use Ruby on the back end. We also have all of the free courses on Udemy. There's so many free courses on Udemy. Now, you, you pay for what you get, so to speak, on Udemy. There's also some other resources to learn code, such as Scrimba. I haven't mentioned Scrimba yet, but Scrimba is... I'm gonna make like a whole dedicated video on, on Scrimba that you could use to learn code. They have React, they have Angular, and they have a couple other technologies there. 
It's a pretty cool site. Obviously, there are free trials that you can use to try out. There's uh, Treehouse, for example. There's Pluralsight. There's Skillshare. Yes, those are links that I have in my description, just being totally honest. Free trials for those. You can learn as much as you want during that free trial and then move on to the next one if you want. There's also Coding War. Coding game, code fights, Linda. They're also Code Academy. I don't know how I forgot Code Academy. That's like one of the one of the OG free learning resources. Not all free now, but there's also Code Academy. Uh, I used to say Code Academy, and then I realized if you look at the spelling, it's not Code Academy. It's just Code Academy. And so that blew my mind. I'm sure there's a couple of you guys out there that are like, wait, what? There's also the free trials at at Code Boot Camps. I know I talk about Lambda School. They're not paying me to mention this. I'm just talking about it because they do have like a free two week code bootcamp that you can join and see if web development is for you. So you can check out those. I'm not sure if other bootcamps offer that. I really, I really don't know. I just know that Lambda School does. Um, you could use that two weeks to see if code is for you, if you really like it. Don't fall in that trap of like, well, I didn't get it on day one, so it's not for me. Like if you know in here that, you know, it could be for you if you just keep pushing forward, if you know that's what you want to do, if you want to land a remote job, type in code all day on a beach somewhere in Thailand, well, then you gotta, you gotta push through those moments. And I know a lot of people have kind of remote dreams like that. That's a lot for you guys to digest. I'll put all the links in the description besides the ones that are already there that I have, and I'll pin them as a comment. And you know, let me know what you guys think. Let me know what you guys think of this video style. I'm trying to move around, change the scenes a lot more. I just appreciate you guys. Thanks for watching the video. If you liked it, hit that thumbs up. If you wanna see more, hit that subscribe button. I appreciate that. Let me know what you think. Comments below, I'd love to hear what resources that I missed. How could you forget this shot? Like, bro, I know, like, trust me, as soon as I stop recording, I remember everything. That's, that's how it goes. I have a Patreon if this video helped you out or other videos have helped you out. Maybe consider me next time you donate to some random guy on the internet. I'm redoing the Patreon perks, so, um, you know, be on the lookout for that. Thanks a lot, guys. I hope that you guys are feeling as motivated as I am today, and I hope that these tips have been helpful. So I'll see you guys in the next video.